lovely starshine lights my way to bed. Magic rainbows glisten in my head. Just like a child, I live in Wonderland. All my dreams are coming true. Heavy shackles. Hi, to welcome to down. Handmade by Ditsy Tulip. I'm Mel, and thanks for stopping by my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share what I made in March. Um, so I've got a, um, a garment which I'm wearing which I'll tell you more about in a second and then there's been some um, other things that I've been working on in line with my 2019 goal to um, not waste fabric and to use up fabric scraps and to recycle fabrics. So um, if you're interested in that then do watch along. So the first thing that I want to tell you about is the lovely blouse that I'm wearing and this was my uh, March, yes it was my March Minerva Crafts Blogger Network make. Um, so I received the fabric for free in return for writing a blog post for Minerva and I'll leave a link to the blog post in the video notes if you want to um, head off and have a read of that at the end of the video. So um, the blouse that I made is the Nina Lee Bloomsbury. Um, so you may have seen in my previous video, I made a lovely silk version of this pattern and I really liked it, but I wanted to try one that's more for spring and summer. Um, and I wanted to also try the smaller ruffle because I wasn't sure if the larger ruffle looked a little bit too big on my um, frame. So um, yeah, that's the first thing that I want to share. The fabric is a Liberty of London Tarn Alone and I think it's still available. It was still available at the time I wrote the blog post, but it is on sale. It is priced at, I think it's 15 pounds, 14.99 a meter, I, I think it is, um, which is about 10 pound off the normal price for Liberty Tarn Alone. Um, so yeah, definitely grab some while it's a bargain if you do uh, like to work with Liberty. And as you can see, it's a really gorgeous spring, summer type fabric. It's got loads of bright colours, reds and blues and pinks and greens. And I thought that it worked really well for this blouse. And the pattern was a lot quicker and easier to make up in the tarn alone than it was in the silk because you're not wrestling with the, with the fabric um, as you go because tarn alone is quite an easy and versatile fabric to work with. I decided to again opt for the you see the um, sleeve without ruffles because I do like to have a little bit of a shorter sleeve. Um, I don't like kind of sleeves going down um, full length of the of the wrist. I do like them a little bit cropped. I opted for the ruffle around the neck, the same as I did last time. But the key difference on the this one that um, runs all the way around, um, I went for the shorter ruffle rather than the larger and one. And I, I do actually really um, prefer the smaller ruffle than the, than the bigger one. It feels much more um, comfortable um, for me and I've got quite a small um, frame. So I, I feel much more comfortable with the smaller ruffle. In case you didn't see my last post about this pattern, the one thing that I did have problems with last time and I've had problems with again this time, so now I know for definite I need to change the pattern, is at the back, if I can turn around and show you, you can see you've got buttons or snaps which go um, all the way up to where the yoke is, which is just where that ruffle is there, and then you have a button or a snap on the neck but as far as the pattern goes you don't have anything on this yoke area and on the silk version I found that it was really gaping open at the back so I had to add some um, snaps to keep it in place and I thought this time I'd try it without adding buttons because I thought it may have been the floatiness of the silk and um, but I had the same problems with this one as well so um, yeah I, I would definitely say I would alter the pattern next time so what I've done on this one I've 
put a picture in but I've just added a couple of those tiny sewing little press studs so you can't see it from the outside um, but I can just snap those um, fastened to keep that closed because I don't want the, um, the back gaping open all the time. So that's the first make. So yeah, I absolutely love it. It's had loads of wear already. It, get lo it gets lots of um, comments when I'm wearing it um, and it feels very spring and summer. So that's the first make that I worked on were smaller things that I've made to use up um, fabric scraps or to recycle old tops and things which I no longer wear. Um, and of course the dressmakers ball outfit was in March so that, that, that took up quite a bit of March. So let me show you the first thing that I made. So um, I've made a turban. So this is just, this was actually just a practice run because I wanted to see how it worked out. But this is just made from some scraps of um, quilting cotton that I'd got. It is just clipped together at the back there because it's a bit too big for my mannequin, but you can see it fits all over the head. And then it wasn't on the pattern, um, but I decided to add this um, bow detail as well. I do really like wearing um, headbands, but I find them... I don't know if I've got a bit of a big head because I find that they're all too tight. Um, so I wanted to have a go at making something like this because I think they look really um, retro and it's ideal in the spring. So and I will now. leave a link. There's a, a, a The pattern I got for this was on Etsy. I can't remember the name of the shop, but I'll leave a link in the video notes if you want to have a look at that. Um, it's quite straightforward to sew. Um, yeah, it doesn't take very long at all and, it, and it's really straightforward. The next thing that I made is another embroidered collar, which I'll um, bring in close to show you in a second. Um, so this is more of a 1970s pointy type collar. And what I've done is I've hand embroidered some uh, sweet little um, scissors with flowers because I thought that will then work really well with my handmade garments. So I'll just bring that in closer to show you. So yeah, that's the um, little scissors. Uh, with nice little flowers and the collar at the back is lined and I've just fastened it with a little hook and eye at the front there. Yeah, so I thought um, I actually had to go away with work for um, a few days and I couldn't take my sewing machine with me so I took um, this away with me so that I could do some hand embroidery when I was on the train. It was a train journey from Stoke to Plymouth um, which is really long um, and then of course a, a hotel stay away for a few nights so I took that with me to, to, to work on in the evening. The pattern that I used for that was from of my, one of my old Bustle and Sew embroidery magazines. I'm not sure if you've heard of Bustle and Sew, but they do. Uh, you can subscribe or you can just buy individual patterns or individual magazines um, and you get lots of lovely embroidery um, patterns and um, little things like soft toys and things like that that you can make. So again, I'll leave a link to that in the video notes. The final thing that I want to share with you is these absolutely gorgeous pussy bow collars, scarves, not quite sure what you call them. Um, so this is a pattern that I found on Etsy again. Um, I'll leave a link in the video notes. And I've made three of these so far. I absolutely love them. These are all made from um, Tarn Lawn and they're either remnants or they are old tops that I've made when I first started dressmaking which don't get much wear um, where they don't fit very well and things like that so I've recycled the fabric and um, so I've got one in this gorgeous white tarn lawn with nice pretty flowers I've got another one which has got um, again it's tarn lawn uh, Liberty and it's got gorgeous creams um, and browns and mauves so that's really pretty as well. And then the final one is another Liberty Tarn Lawn, but this is black, a black back 
background with um, quite bright flowers on there. And these are an absolute treat to make, um, really simple, really straightforward, but um, something where you, you know, you've got to do pleats and things like that. So it's just, it, was, it was quite relaxing and they don't use up um, a great deal of fabric and you can see um, they just snap around the neck and they look particularly um, nice with a shirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly change into a shirt with a collar so you can see what these look like. So I've just popped that on so you can see you just kind of put the band underneath your collar and then just position the bow so that it falls nicely under the collar. And I think they're just a great way of brightening up a plain shirt and using up fabric scraps or recycling fabric in the meantime. So yeah, really loved these and I think I'll have lots more of these um, made with all my um, different remnants. And they'd make great gifts as well if you've got a birthday um, coming up or something like that. They'd make a lovely little handmade gift for a friend or family member. So that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today. That's what I've made in March. I'm currently working on my um, April make so I'm working on a Pauline Alice I think it's called Rastari skirt I think that's what it's called a little 1970s style mini um, denim skirt so that's what's currently on the sewing table and I'll keep you posted about that very soon so if you enjoyed this video then do give me a thumbs up and uh, leave any comments and I will see you very soon have a wonderful week bye Magic rainbows glisten in my head Just like a child I live in wonderland All my dreams are coming true Heavy shackles used to hold me down